Well, it's Sunday and it is Global Weather and Climate Day. Thanks for clicking on to edition 62. This is the current global sea surface temperature anomalies according to the CDAS data. This is based on the 1981-2010 climatology. And you can see here that we continue to strengthen the positive IOD. So the cooling over the East Indian Ocean versus a warmer than average Western basin. Still continuing with the very warm waters over the North Pacific here. We are seeing um, an increase in cooling over the Gulf of Alaska, which is quite interesting. This may have significance later down the road. Of course, we continue with the El Nino um, of a more east-based state at the moment. Very warm North Atlantic, but you notice here that we have chipped away at those warm anomalies, especially off the northeast United States coast. Uh, still very warm through the St. Lawrence uh, you know, upper St. Lawrence River, um, I can't remember the bay actually here, is it uh, Labrador Bay? I can't remember. It's just escaped me actually what the, the, the name of that region is. But you notice also here we've got um, some cooling average to the southwest of the UK and Ireland here. Of course, plenty of unsettled conditions, um, winds blowing across the ocean surface, upwelling the, um, the, the temperature anomaly here, um, unfortunately, to go slightly below average. This is the seven day change, and we continue to see this kind of cooling trend taking place here. Look at the waters surrounding um, Antarctica, which is quite interesting to see. Also, um, we do have some warming taking place through Indonesia, Papua New Guinea. We've got the, the cooling surrounding uh, Japan, where we've had water temperatures five, six, seven Celsius above average. Notice here that we've actually, interesting enough, got slight warming um, over the same region that has, I'm just contradicting myself, actually it looks like. But you can see here, it's warmed slightly over the last seven days here. And over the North Atlantic, we've seen a little bit of cooling over the Central Atlantic versus warming across uh, the Far East. So between the Biscay and the Norwegian Sea, we've seen some warming taking place here. I want to look a little bit at El Nino, but I'm going to do a, a video specifically looking at um, El Nino and the Indian Ocean Dipole this up, upcoming week here. It's going to be quite, quite a busy week actually looking at the bigger picture. And this is all um, you know steps towards this update number two of the winter forecast here. And like I keep saying, um, if you're interested in weather, if you're interested in long range stuff, learning more about what goes into to making the forecast generally, there's going to be a lot of emphasis on El Nino and the IOD, also the Manjulian oscillation, also the response between the ocean and the atmosphere. So the coupling of the El Nino versus the atmosphere here, you know, you could have as much warm water over the over the eastern portion of the Pacific Ocean, but the crucial important aspect is the atmospheric response and the coupling between ocean and atmosphere and the distribution of rising air versus sinking air so the El Nino and the the Manjulian Oscillation as well as the Indian Ocean Dipole which is almost like an Indian Ocean version of El Nino is all very very key so be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so this is Nino region 3.4 and this is the CDAS data. This is off tropical tidbits. And you can see here the latest value is plus 1.170 Celsius above average. Notice here that this is the main, this is the central portion of the tropical Pacific. This is the barometer that measures the type of El Nino that we have in place. So we've got, you know, the only warmer than average water temperatures um, in the eastern, so this is Nino region 1.2, the only year that compares to this is 1997. We are above 2015, I believe, in the, the temperature anomaly over the far east Pacific, but it's actually the 3.4 region that actually is critical, and we're sitting at 1.17 Celsius above average for this region of the Pacific Ocean. Let's have another look at this and see what region 1.2 is because I think we've seen a bit of cooling taking place here. And yeah, we've seen a reasonable drop off in the temperature anomaly here between, um, you know, generally it kind of looks as if back in July it was uh, sitting at the, what, 3.23 Celsius above average, which is really, really warm compared to average record breaking warm. Then we've seen this kind of trend downwards some peaks and troughs as you can see here 
But the general trend is now that we're below uh, 2 Celsius. So we've lost a full degree off that anomaly here in region 1.2, which is going to be very interesting stuff as we go forward here. And uh, so here, in fact, is the, the regions here. Region 1.2 is up against the South American coast, 3, 3.4 and further out in the Pacific here. So this is kind of the dateline westwards. The dateline is generally 180 degrees west. And you can see here that re region four has uh, is the only essential region that has been actually increasing in temperature over the last wee while here. So we've, we've went from um, you know 0 0.5 Celsius, a half degree above average, now to a full degree above average here. So Nino 1.2, 3.4 has been either dropping off or holding steady and it's really the warmest re uh, you know the far west of the pacific here this region right here has seen the greatest increase in recent times here what's going to be interesting is what happens as we go forward now if we look at the man julian oscillation we've not really had a particularly amplified man julian oscillation in recent times here we did have a strong pulse of man julian oscillation influence over the western portion of the pacific back in july and august now may or may not be any coincidence of course that we had of course the rubbish july and august here in the uk with a mainly negative nao pattern and it was that time when we had this strong westerly wind burst when you got this strong convection over and just to the west of the dateline you're increasing the westerly wind anomaly here and this is what helps drive on the El Nino. So we've got, of course, the general sea surface temperature reflective of a moderate to strong El Nino in the ocean, but within the atmosphere, we weren't seeing that great response. There was quite a strong burst of, um, of energy here, this upward motion over the West Pacific during July and particularly so August. And that is reflective actually in the um in this chart here just bear with me one second here if i can get to the right one so this is actually el nino by the way this is the sea surface temperature anomalies here the 20 celsius isotherm anomaly and you can see here that we had el nino of course back around this time last year then we've seen the transition as we go through time this is like a cross section of the pacific ocean now what are essentially the whole ocean uh, basin here so this is the Indian Ocean over here, um, 180 degrees west. That is generally the date line. And you can see here warm versus cold. That is La Nina. And then, of course, we transitioned to an El Nino. So we reversed the sea surface temperature profile to strong warming. You notice here the strong warming back in May. There was another area of strong warming in July. Now, what happened was that westerly wind burst was increased by the man Julian oscillation being strong over the West Pacific. And that then drives a strong westerly wind that then forces a Kelvin wave, which is a ball of warm water underneath the ocean surface. As you then have that upward uh, convection in the column above, you then drive warm, deep waters eastwards across the Pacific. And that is what essentially drives that mechanism of increasing the warm waters over the eastern portion of the Pacific Ocean here. But then the Manjulian oscillation kind of died off. It became it entered the null phase, so to speak. And then we had this little bit of a mix between uh, easterly anomalies and westerly wind anomalies. When you've got an easterly wind anomaly, that tends to then dampen down the strengthening of the El Nino. And that is exactly what we did. See, if you notice here, through August and into September, we started to see the cooling taking place over the far east Indian Ocean. Region uh, four, we've seen an increase in temperature here, or three, I can't remember. Let's have a look and see the regions here. So this region here, region Nino three, sorry, is the region that seemed to uh, see the greatest increase in terms of the temperature anomaly here. And then you notice in re the, the very recent times, this cooling taking place. Um, this is the, the, the continental maritime region here, or sorry, the East Pacific, Central Pacific. And this is the Indian Ocean here. So quite interesting stuff. Where do we stand with regards to the El Nino at the moment? So this is based on region 3.4.
and you can see here the latest calculation june through september or july through september sorry we're sitting at 3.1 celsius above average here you notice here that we're technically not in an el nino because you have to have that three month running mean above 1.5 celsius now if you look back in history where were we back in 2009 we are sitting slightly uh, above the 2009 el nino uh, back in uh, the july through september period it was 0 0.6 celsius above average then you go to 2015 where we're below that just uh, that was at 1.9 celsius above average for the, the july september average uh like i say we're at 1.3 at the moment we go to back 2000 1997 sorry and of course that is your kind of benchmark so to speak and we're sitting at 1.9 celsius above the average is that right or is it actually the uh, july called september yeah 1.9 celsius above average in 3.4 so we are sitting below 1997 and with july uh, to september uh, 2015 that's the last time i had the super early new that was the same as what 97 was for region 3.4 1.9 celsius above and of course we're sitting at 1.3 notice here that we do eventually go on to see the el nino uh, continuing to strengthen in region 3.4 through 2009 so we go from uh, 0 0.6 celsius to 1.6 celsius above average for the november december january period here looking at 2015 we are expecting to see that i normally go through the roof 2.2 2.4 2.6 celsius above average in 2015 here 1997 we went all the way to 2.4 celsius above average but the cfsv2 is indicating this continuation of weakening and by the way we will have a look and compare some uh, historic sea surface temperatures versus what we've got now in the video coming up this week as well so enough about the El Nino IOD Manjulian oscillation here. We are going through um, a, a bit of a kind of central and east Pacific upward motion situation at the moment here. So we will look at that in a bit more detail this upcoming week with regards to what the CFS V2 forecast is for both the El Nino, the IOD and the Manjulian oscillation as we go forward and what that may lead to uh, in terms of winter weather uh you know whether we get strong winter weather or we get um more enhanced jet stream and of course mild wet conditions for the for the upcoming winter season so stay tuned for that we will look at that in the in the, the days ahead of course. okay so looking at september once again we of course had not only this is an interesting tweet here by ben Knoll, uh, saying that september 23 it wasn't just the warmest september on record globally but it was also the moistest too and of course right here in the uk particularly so scotland we've seen some remarkable rainfall and flooding over the last few days uh we continue to see that but it looks as if it's now starting to ease but of course we've seen the greek situation we had new york flooding we had libya we've had um, multiple areas of the world that have seen remarkable rainfall in recent times here and you know what is causing that is it the you know the global sea surface temperature profile at the moment here no denying the fact that the water temperatures are as warm as they are but also releasing a, a lot of moisture into the atmosphere here warmer oceans warmer atmosphere contain more moisture but also um we have seen in september 2023 total column water was above normal across 76 percent of the planet here so you can see the amount of moisture compared to average over the global atmosphere here which is very interesting this is very reflective of el nino as well increasing the amount of water within the atmosphere that is the reason why i thought that we would see a return to wetter than average conditions through the second half of 2023 and that's exactly what's happened look at the lack of dry and um, look at the lack of moisture over the east indian ocean through australia here in particular that of course is a, a reflection of both the positive iod and el nino with the increase in moisture over the pacific ocean but look at, look at the amount of moisture in the northern latitudes here which is very interesting to see here tonga hunga el nino uh, you know transitioning after a three-year la nina very very possible here 
Stay tuned for part.